Hello, beautiful people. How you doing today? Mic check. Do you hear me well? Absolutely. Okay, awesome. Hello, YouTube. So this time we have the video on and you can see Novel, who is my guest today. How you doing, Novel? Thank you for coming. I'm doing pretty good. How are you? I'm okay. This was a great day. As I told you, my class was canceled. So that was annoying because I came all the way to school just to find out that I came for nothing, which is very annoying. But I did some writing, so that's fine. Can't complain. Okay, let's present the topic today. Uh -huh. I'm excited for this one because we're going to talk about something that is like close to both our hearts, yeah. you know, and we're talking about uh, being a creative in the city, you yeah. know, and um, those of you who have been following, you know, I'm a musician, I'm a photographer, just a creative and novel here is a photographer as well. Absolutely. So I'm excited. Okay. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, all right. I'll try Shit, to to myself. myself. <laughs> yeah, every time I, like, I'm on the spot. All right. So um, I'm 31. Uh, I am a photographer. I do videography on the side as well, but I'm mainly a photographer. Um, what about me? Uh, you came to New York when? Oh, I moved here two years. So I was, I was originally born here, um, but I was raised in Savannah, Georgia. Um, I uh, want to say I moved back. So we, I was born here, then we moved down when I was like three or four. So I've been back and forth because technically my mom's side of the family is in New York. So um, I've been back and forth all my life, but I decided to move back as an adult. Why? Please tell us why you decided oh, to come back to New man. York. Uh, From oh, Atlanta. Yeah, oh, tell pressure. us. All right, so um, I moved back to... New York, or I decided to make the move to New York from Savannah because um, when I was in Savannah, I was working for uh, a, a very, very great individual named Somi Benson Jaja. Um, I worked for so Shot by Somi Studios, and we were doing like a lot of photography and stuff like that. Um, and what ended up happening was. I got tired of being under his shadow. Not, no disrespect to Somi, I love you to death, you taught me everything. But, um, <laughs> but it was like so much of me holding up the lights and people weren't really giving me that proper respect. Like I wasn't like an actual photographer. Like I'm like not out here being a creative. And it started getting under my skin a little bit. So I said, you know what? I'll be 30, I'm 31 now. Um, I was 29 at the time and I said, well for my 30th birthday, I owe it to myself. I also have a daughter, so I owe it to her to actually try and pursue my dreams. So um, right before I moved, I went ahead and created my uh, photography brand, which is Asani Essentials Photography, LLC. And I'm going to link it to the YouTube people watching. I'm going to link it down below so you can check his workout. Absolutely. Appreciate it, appreciate it. But yeah, that's what made me move. That was like the, and it was scary. It was, can I curse? Of course. It was fucking terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to me, y'all. On some real shit. It was, it was fucking terrifying. But it was the greatest decision I've ever made in my life. It's one of the hardest ones because I'm used to being around my daughter so much. But, and also it was hard because the market. Um, in Savannah, we started taking over. And for all the other photographers in Savannah, there's no shade or anything. But y'all know who's shot by Somi is. We were, we were taking over for a while. And so I was like, all right, well, I'm still under shot by Somi. Like, when people see me... They're like, oh, that's the guy that works for Shot by Somi. It's not, oh, that's Noble, the photographer. So that's why I had to take that leap of faith. And now I'm here and I'm doing it. And I've been doing it for two years now, coming up on two years now. So. I feel like the, sometimes the, these, the, hardest, uh, the hardest and the scariest decisions are the ones that pays off, the, mm -hmm. pay off the most, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah, so it's definitely scary, and I, everyone I talk to that come to the city, it's always a hard decision. It's always like, you know, it's it's full of like fears and doubts, and like what it, you know how, and it's a big city, yeah, so absolutely. you know it's not just like, you know, so so I feel like oh, shout out to you for you know making the the change and doing it for your daughter. That's like that's that's very sweet of you, and I'm sure she's proud. Yeah. I mean, she <laughs> She, I, 
I think she, I don't know, technically, you know what I mean? Because I'm still, it's like every day I wake up, I'm like, oh my God, I'm a, I'm a dad. But um, I do see the pride in her eyes and her smile when she does explain what I do to people. Or she's like, my daddy, he's a photographer, and he does this, that, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm like, okay, well, I love this. <laughs> I, I like this energy. Let's keep it going. That's very so, sweet. You know. That's very cute. What would you say about the competition in New York? coming from Atlanta. Like, do you feel there is more competition here photography-wise? Is it harder to, you know, to get clients, to get jobs, or is it easier because it's such a big city? I think, okay, so initially, because I came from a small city, um, it was already beginning to be oversaturated in the market that I was in, in Savannah. Um, but, of course, if it's beginning to be oversaturated down there, of course it's going to be crazy up here. So when I got up here, it's like photographers everywhere. Um, but I think the networking aspect of it, like if you meet some really cool photographers like How I Met You, you know what I mean? Um, that type of networking a aspect of it will show you that, all right, it's not, it is oversaturated, but it's all about who you know sometimes. So if you are at these events, like my first, I don't know if you know, but my first New York Fashion Week event, I was supposed to shoot one like some years ago. My first one actually being in the setting to where I could actually shoot something was because you invited me. I wouldn't oh. have gotten the opportunity if you would. I mean, I, pro I, I don't know what, you know, I don't know what, what would have happened. <laughs> but the fact that you just did, and it was so seamless, it was perfect. So I'm like, oh, this it is. It was fun. It was my first time too. And I got invited from Instagram. You know, I didn't even know the guy. And I was like, it's probably bullshit. But then we talked. <laughs> And I was like, oh, that's serious. <laughs> okay. It was <laughs> I nice guess we're too. going to New Yo, York listen, Fashion Week. <laughs> this New York Fashion Week event was fucking awesome. No, it was what really was cool. It was really, really cool. Um, I actually almost got another job uh, from the same guy, uh, but it ended up not working out. But it's cool because you write about the networking aspect of it because you meet people. And especially, we met a lot of like designers and models. And I'm sure if we like stayed and like talked more, you know, and like, because we didn't do that much of networking yeah. when we came to the event. But I'm sure that if like, you know, that if we did that, we, we would know more people. Yeah. Okay. And these models that we took photos of, they ended up tagging my account with the photos that I send them. So it's like, it's also kind of like a networking thing, you know, that like next time they might know someone or something mm -hmm. or they have another show. And I'm like, I'm just here, mm. chilling, waiting for the call. Absolutely. I'm the same here. Same here. But something that I, that I do want to say about the competition in the city, because you're right, like it's, oh, it's a lot of people, you know, like it's definitely a lot of photographers a lot of people like everyone's trying to make it work you know everyone has their own prices as well so Absolutely. sometimes you know there are photographers that do it for like 50 dollars, and then mm -hmm. i say my prices and people are like the fuck mm -hmm. <laughs> why the fuck you charge so much and i'm like well that's you know what quality what type of quality exactly. do you want for the work because i can like if you pay 50 you'll get you'll get 50, quality, you'll get 50. and i realized that like it's it's true and i had the same experience living in la uh, with the musicians that were there because I was like there's such a big competition everyone here comes to you know achieve something you know mm -hmm. whether you're an actor or singer or photographer whatever you are you know like everyone comes with a dream mm -hmm. um, but what I realized is actually when you actually start looking at, at the competition mm -hmm. You can scratch half of this competition. It's Absolutely. not really a competition Absolutely. like you look at the quality of the photos you look at people let's say have these people are not willing to put in the work mm -hmm. you know the, uh, half of these people don't even know how to edit but we're not gonna get yeah but this. like you know even even if you like take talent aside mm -hmm. not everyone can actually hold on a business you That's know true. like manage all the aspects of like clientele and contracts and money and you know everything that's included in having a business mm -hmm. so the fact that you have a camera and you like taking photos doesn't necessarily make you a pro photographer, oh, you know, especially like like you were saying about networking, reaching out to people. It's like if you just sit at home and, you know, you, you don't really do anything and you're just waiting for the phone to ring, you're not my competition. Yeah, I'm not worried about you at all. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's, it's easy to, uh, some, at first it's, it's kind of like of a challenge to, it's kind of a challenge to see who are the 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 real deal like because of course when you're looking at competition i always like friendly competition so competition to me is not like oh i hate your stuff 
I'm going to be better than you. No, it's <laughs> like, I see what you're doing. Now I need to up the ante. Now I need to do at least, you know, somewhere. I'm, okay, so I will be better. But um, I <laughs> need something to hit that same, whatever I felt when I saw that image, I need it to hit the same way when I post my next image. I'm trying to fuck the social media game up. <laughs> so um, good luck with that real, <laughs> they're like that's... fucking making it impossible for real but um <laughs> because of that you start noticing like you have those people that how we used to call them um what the point and shooters they just point and shoot they don't really know too much about the schematics of the camera um especially uh if they don't know the schematics of the camera i don't know if they so much know as the business part either um but you start you start realizing like oh, okay this person has this it's even down to like a certain way people carry themselves and also the lane that you want if you are in a certain lane if you are good at headshots but you want to you know venture out it's nothing wrong with venturing out but if you are good at headshots and that's what you excel at i think you're a headshot photographer you should start your business there and it'll make life a lot easier i feel like yeah i i heard about the part that like the the smaller your niche is the easier it is to grow and I kind of get that, but again, being in New York with so many opportunities, mm -hmm. I came here as a portrait photographer and portrait photographer only, mm -hmm. but then somehow I became a food photographer mm -hmm. and now I work with like a lot of restaurants around the city and I'm like, well, I got this photography gig from, you know, doing food. So I need to learn that. So I need to step up my game, you know? I'm still yeah. doing portraits. But then, and then suddenly it was like events, you know? And I got a lot of questions about like, oh, can you do events? Can you do that? And I'm like, oh, fuck, I need to step up my event photography. Mm -hmm. And like sometimes I feel like, especially for those of you who are starting out, uh, trying to grow, uh, paying rent in New York, let's talk about yeah. that for a second. <laughs> it's like, you know what? <laughs> let, me do, let me do what you need Insane. me to do. So I feel like, yeah, in the beginning, I, I think that it's good to try different things, you know, but eventually as a pro photographer, I agree with you that you find your, like, what you're best at, what's your, you know, you know, what's your cup of tea? Like, I, I found that I love editorial. I love editorial. Yeah. I don't get many editorial shoots because um, I'm still not well known within that industry. So I'll get a few jobs, but if I'll sit around and just wait for editorials yeah. i i'm gonna need to you know go be a bartender somewhere because yeah. i'm just so uh yeah but like every photographer eventually they found find their own like ah oh, this is what i love to do and the more you grow the more you develop you become that Absolutely. you know i think it's a journey and coming from me i was a i started out as a hey where did i start i started as a street photographer so i was usually like i would go around taking pictures of just random things just to get like the whole composure um, thing, like the rule of thirds type of thing down. And then once I graduated from that, um, I started getting into headshots. So right now, still, I feel like I'm the best at head, I mean, to me, I'm the best at headshots. <laughs> but because I did so much working for um, Shot by Sony Studios in Savannah, um, we've done real estate. We've done, well, me personally, I've done real estate, I've done food photography, I've done um, weddings, I've done anything you would think of, man. Um, What's the one you like the least? Uh, the one I like the least? I would say it's a love-hate relationship, but it has to be portrait photography. Really? And the only what? Reason, and the only reason I say portrait photography... <laughs> I'm so shocked. <laughs> the only reason I say portrait photography, and this is... This, I love taking the pictures, don't get me wrong. I, I love doing the actual photography sessions and stuff, but I don't like telling people what to do. I don't know if y'all can tell, but I'm pretty soft-spoken. So Work I don't, with models. See, they know what the hell they're doing. I love working with models. They're just like, yeah, like this. You just but see, <laughs> that comes to the networking aspect. If I network with enough, yeah. you know, enough, I have a few, but some of them are just starting out. So it's like they're looking for that guidance. Like, oh, you're, I see your work. You're the professional photographer, so you should know what you want. And I'm like, yeah, I do know what I want, but, you know, I don't know how to pose and do all this stuff. But I'm getting better at it. I, I saw that that was a weakness of mine, and I've been getting better gradually, and I have been being more vocal, trying to be more vocal when it comes to this. So I can see the progression. So I guess with that, 
it's still a love hate relationship. Yeah. But you know. No, I totally get it. Like a, a lot of my clients would need guidance, especially couples. You know, guys they. You know, or portrait photography for guys. I have a lot of these lately, you know, for like dating apps and things like that. And the guy would come, but they don't know what to do. And oh. <laughs> I kind of get it because I can guide them. But when I'm in front of the camera, you saw me, you took photos of me. And Kavi was like, yeah, just put your hand here and your leg over there. And, you know, and so, because I, when I have a mirror, maybe it's easier because I'm like, oh, I know how I look like. But it's, suddenly when I'm in front of the lens, the pressure is it, it's hard. I'm like, mm-hmm. where does this hand go? How do I put my fingers, you know, and I'm just like, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. So after being in front of the camera, I kind of understand the stress, especially with people who never did a photo shoot before. So I kind of needed to teach myself how to approach people and how to explain them. And I would often just get confused with my words, Mm -hmm. you know, and the person is standing and I'm like, yes, your hand over there with the head (laughs) switched and turned and and the person is looking at you like, huh? So it's also it's also a process, but I definitely get what you're saying. When like you're not only the photographer, you're the stylist mm-hmm. of the of the whole thing. You're doing everything. So yeah, think about like yeah. a production. If you're working for a film, like I'm like the technically I'm the head director, I guess. So I have to I have to focus on lighting. I have to make sure this camera is shooting this and 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 making sure that you're posed right. And it's it's a lot, you know what I mean. But it's fun. It's it's that's where the passion comes, and that's where the creativity comes too. It. I guess it leaves a little room for me to actually have fun in what I'm doing. So, yeah. how would what would you recommend a creative that comes to New York, new, doesn't know anyone? On and let's take the aspect of photography out. Maybe it's a photographer, filmmaker, musician. You know, just artistry because I feel like people that um, come from the corporate world you know like a lot of people moving here for business and they're looking for a specific company to work in so let's talk about like freelancers you come as a freelancer do you have any advice to how to start or where to you know for freelancers oh. yeah for freelancers um, I would say your first step or the 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 main thing to focus on is give yourself grace. Patience is key. It's not going to happen overnight. You got to take it one day at a time. Like we talked about earlier, networking, networking, networking. Networking is free. What is networking? Like, okay, so I came to the city. Um, let's let's say I'm coming from a small town. We don't have networking in oh. the small town. I come from a village. Mm-hmm. Um, what is networking in New York? Networking in New York is just going out. Um, a lot of my friends like to say outside, but it's literally just going out and just, I guess, being vocal, being a extrovert, being um, finding those those. The easiest way I'm trying to think of a, a good way or a good analogy. All right, so you know, back in like high school, you had cliques, you had the jocks, you had the cheerleaders, you had I guess the whole sport. That's a whole umbrella of people. Um, then you had like. I guess your gothic crew, then you had like the whatever, the the rich, the poor, whatever, however the you The nerds. Do. Yeah, the nerds. <laughs> oh, I, I was a nerd. The choir, <laughs> you have the chess club. See what I'm saying? <laughs> and so once you start, I guess once you start finding those clicks, like, all right, I want to be surrounded. And it's all about what you want out of your lifestyle. What, what do you want for yourself? Um, if you want to be a party goer, you will hang around the party and click. You would be in all those social scenes to where like the meeting, uh, the meetup type of events, uh, any type of bar hopping events, anything like that. And that's the easiest way to network. You just start meeting people and talking to them. That's the easiest way to get into whatever you're trying, as, as far as like coming to New York and trying to be a creative. That's the easy, and it's many creators out here. I know, and I feel like in New York it's very easy because there is everything. No mm-hmm. matter what you're looking for, what group you belong to, there will be something here, you know? Absolutely. And for a creative, as somebody who's like, I'm doing many things, so me coming to New York, I I did to gem, I, I went to gem sessions, okay. I, um, I went to gallery openings, mm-hmm. I went to photography meetups, you know? Mm-hmm. And I know that in if you go to, and you know I recommend these sites all the time, but meetup.com or Eventbrite, you can mm-hmm. always find events, just type, your industry or you type music type photography f- whatever modeling whatever it is 
And also like a good thing that works really well in New York, Facebook. Yeah. And I know some of you listening, you're like, okay, grandma, it works. <laughs> you know, it's just like, there are groups uh, and you know, you're yeah. part of some of it, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's how we met. And, and that's how me and Kavi met. Like I met a lot of people through Facebook, just being on these creative groups. You know, and like photographers collaborations or, you know, models and photographers NYC, you know, and somebody would post something and you can jump on the opportunity or you can ask to help or you can or there is an event happening with all these, you know, you can meet photographers and models and stylists and it just but you're right. You always need to be out there. You can't just sit sit in in your apartment and just wait for the, you know, because a lot of people I feel like, especially when it comes to creative, we trust social media to do mm-hmm. it for us and that's just it unless you are willing to spend a lot of dollars on promotions yeah. and boosts and shit like that that doesn't work you know like you need to actually go out there mm-hmm. and get involved show with the people face. show your beautiful face yeah let these people know who you are exactly and i talked about it i think in my previous or maybe two shows ago I was talking a little bit about networking and it's scary mm-hmm. as fuck and it's not easy, especially if you come here alone, which by the way, I think it's the best way to come to New York. Let's like just, you know, as a side note, I didn't come alone to New York, but I feel like now I'm actually starting to like explore and experience what New York should be because when you come with somebody, it's very comforting and we, we tend to stay in this mm-hmm. comfort zone with the person we came with, whatever it's a roommate or a friend or a spouse or whatever. But when you come alone, you're kind of forced to just be out there and, yeah. and explore and meet new people. And it's easier to meet new people Absolutely. like that. Um, so yeah, if you, if you come alone to New York, definitely know that there is a positive side to it. Mm-hmm. And you know, just be out there, look for these events, go out all the time. I have a rule that says that if you go to a networking event or whatever, wherever you're going, mm-hmm. there they can be like a hundred people there. But if you met one, if you just made one mm-hmm. connection, mm-hmm. it's Sometimes a good connection. That's enough. Yeah. That's 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 good. You know, don't try to be friends with everyone. Try to network with everyone. If it's one person, you're good. Absolutely. Make another one next time you go, right? <laughs> <laughs> or you could challenge yourself. Um, I used to start with one because I don't. I'm not a. I used to not be a very social person. So I had to challenge myself and start going to these events. All right, if I could just talk to one person, I'll feel accomplished. Then the next event, all right, I did one already. That made me feel good. Now let's try for two. And then three and then four. And now I don't know. I just go on events and I'm like talking to everybody and stuff. And I don't, I, I think in my, like, to me, when I look at it, when I look back, I'm like, I'm not that. Uh, extroverted like I don't I'm not a sociable person I don't be and then when I actually get in those settings I start switching that that whole professional like oh I'm I'm really networking I start talking to all these people and then like friends that I have with me they'll be like bro like you you did you not realize that you just talk to everybody in this room and everybody like they know you like people walking up to you shaking your hand and stuff like that. I was like bro I, I like that's realize. the alcohol <laughs> exactly exa- she knows me so well <laughs> exactly it's it's used to the alcohol no, but I it helps. Like, I get it. It helps, you know. I, I sometimes would come to, like, these networking events, and I'll sit at the bar, and I'll be just like, I don't know how to talk to people. I forgot mm-hmm. my words, everything. But, like, you know, this one drink can actually, if that helps you to just a little bit, like, feel a little bit more. Liquid. Little, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that liquid courage that is real, y'all. Drink don't overdo a little it, bit. Though. Yeah, don't be the drunken <laughs> person at the party. But, you know, if you need a little boost, you know, mm-hmm. if, Okay. You don't cool. want to be remembered for the wrong things. Yeah, but. right. But I also feel like in every networking event, it just takes time until you open up. But mm-hmm. once you start, even without alcohol, if you take that mm-hmm. out, if you don't drink, it's completely fine. Yeah. But once you start talking to one person, it's, it, it's it gets easier. like it gets, yeah, it gets there. Because then you're talking to this person, one person comes, joins the group, and then you kind of like, it, you open up. Mm-hmm. I feel like the hardest part is to actually arrive to the event. Yeah. And open your mouth for the yeah, first time the rest is just like you know what i'm already here i'm doing it it's fine and you'll be surprised how many people like a lot of us like overthink it we'll be like oh i, I want to go to this event but i feel like it might not be this type of crowd there or that type of crowd just go that's excuses just that go. we make in our heads mm-hmm. to just you know i it's like me i'm like 
coming to a first client, you know, like booking your first gig. You're like, I can't do it. You know, I don't know, you know, what if they don't like it? What if I mess up? What if my camera breaks? What if somebody steals my card? You know, it's just you haven't like, even taken the just, first I know, it's step just like, shut up, <laughs> just do it. Oh, I have a question for you. Okay, so we were talking about pricing, right? And photographers mm -hmm. will do it for like a really low price. Mm -hmm. uh, all the T, TP. Oh, TFP? TFP, mm -hmm. yeah, like that. Um, so my question to you is, what do you think, because I have my opinion about it too, and it changed actually, so I'm okay. going to share with you in a second. But what do you think about charging low prices for your photography or doing free shoots? Um, What's your opinion? Because I know a lot of photographers think that it kind of like ruins the industry and it craps on our work. Um, so, I oh, that is a loaded question. Um, and that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I I used to have a a certain opinion on it. Um, now it's more open minded. So, starting out in college, I was a starving artist, technically, or or struggling college student. So I used to do. <laughs> the $50 shoots and $60 shoots and stuff. And it was like good stuff, you know? Um, but now because I have gotten to where I am, I've been doing it for so long. Um, it's been 10 plus years now. It's like, uh, I have to charge what it's for me. My prices have to reflect for one, you're getting an experience. It's not just, I'm just taking pictures. No, you're getting noble Asani. Like you're getting the full experience and I need you to understand it. This is, when you find a photographer that you love, or it doesn't even matter about a photographer, when you find anyone that has a brand that you love, once you get to know that brand, it's like, I have to shop with this person because I, I love you know what they do. So um, I will always second guess myself what prices. I've always been the person that looks out or tries to look out for people's pockets, but there have been times where I did photo shoots for like a little of nothing and I was still hurting, like I was still struggling. So it's like, okay, well, I have to be a little bit more intentional. I have to set those boundaries and say, hey, this is my price and I have to stick to it. Um, for the ones that are doing like the low prices and stuff like that, it's fine if you're starting out, that's, that's fine. Yes, it does kind of mess up the market for the ones that, you know, charge the, I'm not gonna say we charge astronomical prices, but we, we give you the bang for the buck. Um, I say for those people, yeah, you could keep doing it, but after a while, you'll you'll get to a point where we are too, and you'll say, all right, well, I can't charge fifty dollars for every shoot. Um, there are times where I will reach out to like some friends or people that I know, or I'll just see somebody random. I'm like, oh, I want to take a picture of this person, and I'll do a shoot for free, just so I can have that exposure. It might be for something else as far as the networking opportunity, or it might be um, for the exposure, just so I know this person might have a bigger following than mine. So if they post it and tag me in it. I'm good. That's my compensation for it. So I think when you look at it that way, it doesn't it doesn't so much as mess up the market. Once you have your clientele, if you're still building clientele, that's different. That's a whole different story. But um, once you have your set base clientele, and it's going to keep growing, of course. But once enough people like I like your brand, I think you should be fine. Um, I, th I I would I would like to say you should be fine. Um, and yeah, and then like I said, I'm always like I'll go from charging, and please don't 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 judge me on this, but it might be a corporate shoot that I'm doing. And I have to I charge them, you know, appropriately for a corporate shoot because it's professional. I, 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 I they got the money, team. they're fine. Yeah, but see, <laughs> they can afford it. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Oh shit, they're charging their clients so much more. So you know. That's true. <laughs> that is definitely true. Um, and because of that, it has me like okay, well I know. It's like you know your you, you you just start to get to know your clients. Like I, I know if if you come to me and you're like okay, first the the biggest question that a lot of photographers do not ask, what is your budget? A lot of the times people ask us for prices and then we'll give them a price and that's too much. Okay, what is your budget? You got to let me know what your budget is. What what are we working with? Because yeah. maybe I can make something. I can make a, a curated package just for what you need. And I win and you win. Mm -hmm. But if you're just like coming to me like oh I just want to do a portrait session. All right, well, I gotta charge you three fifty for a portrait dress. You, how many outfits do you want? I want two outfits. Okay, what is your budget? Because if you can't afford it, then we we sh for one, I don't wanna I don't wanna say we shouldn't be talking because I don't wanna x out the people that that really they want the experience but they can't afford it right now. 
you know what I mean? So well, there are other options. Then they they'll go to a different photographer, you know. And like I think we all have our how much we can bend for a price. Mm-hmm. And I think for me it really depends because like you were saying, if I work in with a corporate. I'm like no oh, discounts, definitely. sorry, Absolutely. you know, like no, you got you got the, I know you have the money, you know, just pay me what <laughs> I worth. But there are people like if I'm working with, let's say, a small business that's just starting out, you know, mm-hmm. and we're even like the the brand that I was working with, like we're building a relationship for the future. I'm the photographer for everything that, that's, that's exactly. happening next, right? So the person is like, okay, how much would you charge me? I'm like, okay, let's just talk about it. Mm-hmm. Because I prefer to have you as a client constantly and to help you out and to grow with you because when you're fucking gonna be in the top, I'm gonna be right, be right there, there with exactly. you, right? So I can do it for less money now because you're not just using me, but we're actually like, you know, we're doing it for each other. Mm-hmm. So things like that, you know, sometimes I would be flexible with like women owned businesses, you know, when I'm like, let me help you out. Like it's, it's fine, you know, and if it's not hurting me, if it's not something that I'm, I know that I'm going to suffer while working and thinking like, oh, I need to get paid more. <laughs> if it's not that case and I'm just like, you know what, I can give you a discount because mm-hmm. I believe in what you do or I want to help out or things like that. But, um, but definitely I feel like when I was starting out, I had really low prices because I'm like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, yeah. you know? And if somebody will give me a project that I never done before, something that I, I didn't shoot before ever, like let's say somebody will like tell me, I need to shoot a wedding, okay. big, huge wedding, right? I never shot a wedding. Do, I don't do weddings. But let's say I agreed, right, to do a wedding. Uh, and they'll ask me for a price. I don't think I would charge as a pro. And I'll be honest with the client. I'll be like, okay, if you want me, just know I never done it before. But, you know, let's, let's talk about it. I'm probably not going to charge you the same way you charge because you did weddings yeah. before you know what you're doing. For me, it's like a first. So, I'm, so if I want to add this to my portfolio and I'm like, okay, you can be helpful. Okay, I'm willing to go lower on the price because then I gain something out of it because now I have a wedding portfolio, mm-hmm. if, again, if I want. And just because, you know, it's my first time. So I feel like it's, it's very, but the more we grow, the more professional we become, that's just like, oh, you want me? You're going to pay that because I've been practicing for 20 years now. Mm-hmm. So pay the price or yeah. walk away. 20 years and you still pay $50 <laughs> is crazy. No, no, no. I, I don't hear about many photographers charging that low, but I do see it on Facebook. I do see it, but that's why I'm saying like it's not even a competition because I'll be like, $50, what are you doing? But then I see the portfolio and I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, okay. You can charge fifty dollars for that. That's fine. Pay. Um, and the hardest thing that I had to realize is, and it's been like, the people that I placed in my life as mentors when it comes to like this photography or being a creative, especially well from the business aspect of being a creative, not just being a creative. Um, people will pay. People will, if they if they really like your work, they'll pay. And you have to look at it like kind of like products and stuff too. Like if someone will save up their whole check to get a Michael Kors bag or uh, to get this Montclair jacket. Like, they will save up the money to get that experience with that photographer that they really want. They really like those photos, so. Yeah. yeah. I feel like sometimes um, clients, no matter what service it is, um, let's say photography or music or you know whatever it is that you're doing that you're offering, sometimes people just don't understand the amount of work that goes into it. Yeah. I was, um, so let's, okay, let's step out of photography for a second and let's say music, right? Okay. Uh, people want to hire a band, right, mm-hmm. for an event or whatever. And you would say, yeah, it's going to be, I, I don't know, but let's say, I don't know, 500 for like two hours. And I'd be like, well, it's too much. Again, I don't know the prices for like, I, I don't play for events. But let's say. And then the, the, the customer would be like, oh, but why is it so expensive? It's just two hours. And then you need to explain. I feel like it's on us sometimes to explain the customers like, okay, but it's not two hours because mm-hmm. I need to gather my band. Mm-hmm. I need to book rehearsal studios. I need to touch up my equipment. Mm-hmm. I need to practice and rehearse all these songs that you want me to perform. Mm-hmm. And the same with photography, right? It's mm-hmm. like my equipment costs more than your event. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about Wait. that <laughs> just for a second. <laughs> Let's talk for a second about the tax that I'm going to deduct from all the, you know, these two hours. Let's talk about the editing that I'm going to mm-hmm. spend you so many hours, you know, the traveling time. It's not two hours. It's, it's, that, it's, it's way so more much more. And it comes mm-hmm. to every freelancer. Everything you do is 
I feel like sometimes we just need to explain the client what what is it actually that you're doing. Um, and, and I heard it from a, uh, from a professional photographer because she was talking about that on YouTube. And she was explaining that like people just don't know. So whenever you send an invoice, you can there are two ways that you can approach it. You can write two hour session, five hundred dollars. Or oh, no. you can write, pam, 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 this Absolutely. is $100, this I is $200. Da, 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 da. The client sees this freaking list of things and that you're going to do for them, and you're like, oh, only $500? Mm, exactly. <laughs> it it, the, it so totally it's like, changes from It's that in the approach, right? It's like mm -hmm. how you decide to tell that to your client. And I feel like you're right about that, because sometimes people would pay a ridiculous amount of money mm -hmm. for like a shirt. It, so, you know, it's just like... Okay. I just had a conversation with my cousin the other day. Uh, we were talking about, I think he wanted me to, I think he's working, he's like the manager or something at Nordstrom. And when he said it, I was like, ooh, Nordstrom. I like the clothes. My tax bracket isn't there yet. <laughs> sometimes I can shop there, but sometimes Nordstrom is kind of, and he was like, no, no. I was like, no, nah, bro. I saw Balenciaga's on, shit, on sale. They were like, Five thousand dollars, like for some shoes. And that's on sale. It's like, <laughs> equipment. You know how much stuff I can get with for one pair of shoes. So, yeah. And people pay it. People walk in there every day and they pay it. They just got it. So, you, you got to think about it. Like, if they have it to pay for sneakers. Yeah. And and to the Balenciaga people out there. Kudos to you. I must, yeah. Because <laughs> I just can't. I can't do it. I can't do it. But, um, yeah. It, they will pay. They will pay for what they want. Clients will definitely pay. Everyone will pay. I will pay for what I want. I'm a I'm not a sneaker head, but I love sneakers. I will pay for those sneakers if I really want them. But yeah, but also like all these brands, they have their clients, right? Like I the same way I shop, I don't know, Zara, mm -hmm. some people shop Balenciaga, right? Like it's mm -hmm. very Michael Kors or you know, Gucci. Mm -hmm. That's in their budgets, you know, because if you talk percentage, the amount of money they make and the amount of money I make, like let's you know Exactly. So I feel like the same way, like sometimes I'm not just I'm I'm just not your photographer. Yeah. You can't afford me, that's fine. And don't come know. you know, don't come blaming me for my prices. Yeah. But you can't afford me and that's fine. You can go on Facebook <laughs> and find somebody, and find somebody for a hundred bucks, you know, and if that's what you can afford, that's fine. Um, and then a lot of times when the clients do that, they start seeing the difference. It's like, okay, I'll yeah. go for this person for a hundred dollars. And then they see the work. They're like, oh, this is not like the person mm -hmm. that I was just previously looking at. Yeah. This is why I charge what I charge. I feel like it happens to all of us when we're trying to save, you know, how mm -hmm. you're trying to book a low cost flight yeah. and you're like, oh, that's a hundred dollars, dollars less. Let's me, let, let's book that. You know? And then you come there and it's like. Oh, you, <laughs> your bags are not included. There's no water on the plane, <laughs> no seat <laughs> belts. You know, it's just like if you want air, you need to pay fifty dollars extra, and then you end up paying so much more yeah. because you were trying to save. And mm -hmm. I feel like it's the same thing. You know, you hire a photographer for fifty dollars, you spend your money, your time, you do the photo shoot, you get the result, and you're like, fuck. Mm -hmm. Now I need to redo the whole thing because this shit is not working out. Mm -hmm. And then you pay more. You know, so just, uh, yeah. It's a, it's definitely a learning curve. It's yep. for all of us though. Just you know, for the for the clients out there that's looking for you know future photographers, we're your people. You know? <laughs> but um, we love portrait shoots. We, so <laughs> we do. Don't 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 listen to what I said before. I love portraits. I love all of it. <laughs> Whatever you need, I got you. But um, yeah, it's it's definitely a learning curve. And once you actually, for for everyone, once you really like figure out I guess and it's always it's every day you learn something new so it's like the learning curve won't stay in a straight path or it won't just you know it's it's, it's gonna it's all type of different avenues lanes you can take highways for some local roads for others like me I like taking the slow and steady wins the race so um yeah once you once you start figuring that out and that also goes with finding your lane in photography and stuff whatever you want to do um and make yourself as marketable as possible when you want to, you know, start your business and stuff. Um, I think once you figure out that learning curve, it makes it a lot easier. As time progresses, it makes it a lot easier. I have a question. What's up? <laughs> I have a lot of questions. So something I'm curious about is, um, so you came here, and luckily for you, you didn't need to work a second job, right? Because no. you came here as a photographer doing photography work, right? Yes. My question is, um, 
so a creative that comes i had like a really well um like i had it in my head and now i lost it but the question generally let me let me get to the point wait um so when a creative comes to the city right again musician comedian dancer actor um do you have an opinion about whether you should find yourself uh, a safety job as well or you need to like to dive right in into like the creativity and just like go 100% into whatever it is you came here to do. So, I'm going to tell you my approach that I did when I uh when I made the move. So, when I finally like I guess I prayed about it first and then I started like coming up with a plan or a nice game plan. Um I knew that I was making a certain amount when I was in Savannah. So I said, okay, well, I'm going to New York. New York is like a really, you know, it's it's costly. So what I did was that whole year, I just like grinded. I had, I still had one job, but I was in a, like the income, the, compared to up here in Georgia, <laughs> totally different. Nowadays though, it's, it's, I don't know what's going on, but everything's going up and we're still getting paid the same. We're not going to get into that. Um, <laughs> but I started noticing that uh, I started stacking like money and I knew that I needed a certain amount of money to have, especially in order for me to like maneuver the way I wanted to. And uh, so by the I, for the whole year, I stacked by the summertime. I, I decided like I did the LLC thing in like April, March or April. So I was legit from that point on. And I just kept on stacking. I literally came up here. This is this. I'm not I'm, I'm not bullshitting y'all. I came up here with like maybe like. Thirty-five hundred dollars, um, and the difference with me is um, I had I told like I said in the beginning my mom's side of the family is up here, so I kind of like was was praying as well as asking family members could I stay with them. It wasn't like on some like oh can I sleep on your couch or everything, but um, I, I but you had like them. you had somebody somewhere to land yeah, first absolutely. until you so I yeah kind of get my you know mm -hmm. get my bearings together which is like you know it's kind of like a privilege coming to New York mm -hmm. City because many people just don't mm -hmm. have that and so um, once I once I came here I had it in my mind I was like all right during the summer I'll fuck around all summer like like legit I, I'm coming here as a creative I'll be shooting all these different things um, I'll be going to these different events and stuff like that. And then reality hit me when I got here. Um, when I, 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 I still remember it when I, like the first day I got here, some crazy stuff happened. And I had to like make different moves to like move from where I was to another spot. Um, once I got to that spot, I like went through like this weird depression of like, I didn't feel like going out. Like I, I wasn't like, like I still felt like I had the motivation in me. I had the inspiration in me. I still was, I, I had that, I wanted to put my best foot forward to like go out and do stuff, but I just wasn't, I, I, I don't know what it was, I just wasn't feeling it. So for like the first couple of weeks I was here, and then it was gloomy, it was raining when I first moved here, it was like for a whole week Can't or two. Can't we all go raining? through that, that's it just there's no specific mm. particular reason to why you're like that, but just like, I'm just not sociable. Mm. Like, social, sociable? Social, yep. Sociable, sociable, mm -hmm. there you go. <laughs> I got it. Um, yeah, but no, we, we all go through phases like that when you're just like, fuck the world. I just mm -hmm. want I was I definitely wanna... on that. But, uh, and that kind of kind of messed me up as far as like, like hit the ball, hit the ground running type of effect. So once I got out of that funk, um, I would say I, I gave myself, realistically, I gave myself like a, a date. So I was like, all right, bye. By August, my birthday's in August. I'll, I'll, at the time, I was 29, so I was like, I'll be 30 in August. So I'm a. What August? What? what? August 20th. I'm a Leo. 20th. You're a Leo. I'm not Damn. big into horoscopes, but I am a Leo. I'm a <laughs> um, okay, noted. Um, but uh, I told myself about August, I should have. I, I should be able to land some type of job in photography. Realistically and unfortunately, I did not. So I ended up getting a job, um, which. That was a blessing as well, but I was already going. I'm not above working at all. I love, to be honest, I love hard labor. I've always been like that all my life. Um, That's a good thing coming to New York City. <laughs> you need to be prepared. Like if you're a lazy ass person coming to New York, just like That's leave. Not work. Don't That's even not come work. here because in New York people have like five jobs, mm -hmm. <laughs> just trying to Everyone's make it. On the move, like it's <laughs> it's insane, man. I, I know so many people right now that have so many jobs. I'm like, oh my god, how are you like? 
I know. I'm doing a hundred things at the same time, and I needed to learn all, all these skills living here because, you know, an opportunity, another opportunity. And I'm like a yes woman, so I'm just like, you want me to do it? Yeah, I'll do it. And then I go home, and I'm like, how the fuck am I going to do yeah. it? And then I learn, and I study, and I'm just like, okay, I can do it. You know, yeah. I'm fine. I get it. But, yeah, I'm as I'm like you, I'm fine with working. Like, I came coming to the city. I worked as a, as a barista. Um, those of you who are watching, you know, that sometimes I'll still go and help out there, you know, when I need or when they need. Uh, it's like it's, it's a very good relationship there. So, um, yeah, I'm not opposed to working at all. And I think no matter what you do, there is always an opportunity. Like I got into food photography from the bakery that I was mm -hmm. working, that See? I'm still working in. Yes. Right. So uh, and this food photography gig got me so much more. So and I know people that will come to the city and just like specifically look for their thing and mm -hmm. just sit around and wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. No, mm -hmm. you, I feel like you got to kind of like swallow your ego a little bit mm -hmm. and just do what you got to do um, to 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 start the ball rolling, mm -hmm. you know? So so then like we said, you know, eventually you get this job and then this job and then you'll able to actually build yourself into something like that's where I want it to be. Mm. And even then, you're still going to work hard, yeah, you know? For real. This city won't let you it be like, ah, I'm chill yeah. now, you know? Let me just, like, sit and yeah. money is rolling. The grind will never stop. Yesterday's price is not today's price. I know, right? Oh, we can take a break now. We've been talking for an hour. Oh, that's crazy. I talk too much. Minutes. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you. <laughs> Why do you think I got this radio show? I'm like, I need to... <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we're gonna take a break. So we have a playlist that you uh, that you send me. So we're gonna play those songs because I like love songs. your songs. I remember we were in the car and I was like, I like this music. That's good. So listen. <laughs> side note: I didn't know if she was gonna like it or not because they were in the back seat, and I was like, Oh man, I don't want to play some crazy shit. And then they, they just be like, What is this shit they were listening to? So it no, out. I liked it. I um, I don't know which songs you like, uh, you know, chose here. Uh, but I do like generally your music, so that's why we're gonna play your playlist and take a little break, and then we're gonna come back after 15 minutes. So stay with us, stay with us. All the cameras here, there's many cameras. Stay with us. And we are slowly coming back live from Newtown Radio with Noel. Okay. Back is your video on? Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. That was a good 45-minute talk about the creative business in New York City. Okay. So we stopped by talking about, you know, willing to work hard and... Oh, oh wait, fuck. Um, there you go. Now there's video. Okay, cool. There's always so much to press. Okay. Um, so we were talking about the aspect of like hustling in the city, you know, and something that I also want to mention is that um, being a freelancer doesn't necessarily mean that this is like that it's all up to you. Like I just want to mention to people like there are a lot of things you can get involved in that will help you move forward. Like there are a lot of photography companies that mm -hmm. you can work and obviously you're not going to make the same amount of money that you make as a freelancer you know like getting your own clients because you're going to work through a company but especially you know it being new york i feel like it's better if you um if you have all these options to work for different companies you know and sometimes this company would send you clients and of course you can keep working on your clientele as well but this is something that i do i work with many many different companies that will hook me up with clients you know and obviously um it's um the rates are smaller per hour, but it's more stable because you all you already know that like you can get booked more, you can get more jobs, so you get your experience and things like that. And if you have the option as a creative to get um, a job that is closer to what you do, maybe not necessarily like if you're coming as a musician or as an actor, let's say actor, right? Because we didn't talk about it much. Let's say you're coming as an actor to the city and obviously getting an acting gig that's very hard, you know, like to expect that you come here, just go to Broadway and be like, oh, can I just join your cast? And people will be like, yeah, come on in. <laughs> nah, like that's not going to happen, right? 
So, um, but I, I feel like if you want to get closer to the industry, if you want to start working as an actor, like, first of all, there are a lot of acting jobs for New Yorkers here, like in independent films, you know, in commercials and things like that you can get involved with. But also, like, if you go and you start working, if you really want to get, let's say, in, into Broadway, you don't have to start on stage, right? You can, like, if you can do other things, and even if you can't, like, let's say, there, of course, in theater, there's so many jobs, right? So in, in photography, in, like, in every aspect, like, of, you know, the creative world, we have so many jobs that are related to what we do, and maybe they're not, like, as direct, but we were talking earlier about networking, mm -hmm. right? And if you're working in Broadway, maybe it's not your dream job to sell tickets or to be an usher or to whatever it is that you're doing right now you get to know the right people mm -hmm. that eventually you'll be like oh you've been here you know for a while like what's your name and you're mm -hmm. like oh i'm that and that and i'm i also you know i That's i act <laughs> it's so important because you have to like i said like when you when you sit back and you're like all right you have those big dreams right this is what i want my life to look like i want the I don't know. I want the me personally. I don't need a fancy car, but you know, I want the fancy car. I want the nice. Don't insult your car. Uh, oh yeah, Beanie Weenie <laughs> is the truth. Listen, y'all. Listen, Beanie Weenie. Uh, it works. It my drives. Heart goes out to Beanie Weenie. Gets Beanie us places. Weenie, then the fact that I drove Beanie Weenie from Georgia to here, and I'm still driving to Connecticut, and I just yeah, shit. Was, this car is a hero. Like, what? Shout out to Beanie Weenie. But um, I think that. When it comes to that that lane, like the, the networking thing, like you put yourself in position to be the best version of yourself. So, all right, if I know I like like for me, I, I guess personal experience, um, in which it did not work out that way at all. But it's okay. So when I first moved here, my first job was working for Canon. I shoot with a Canon, so I'm like, oh man, and and this was also not. What to, did you do for Canon? This is where it gets interesting. So um, I ended up getting this job. It was a blessing. I got this job through my, it was technically through my aunt, but it definitely was through my uncle because he actually works there. He's like one of the financial advisors or something like that. I don't want to put his business out there. So he's just a, he's, <laughs> People he's will be a calling regular. your uncle. Yeah. Can you get me a job with Ken? <laughs> yeah, he, he just, he's, he's, a, he's a really Can good Can I guy. have his number? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he ended up hiring me on, or they, they hired me on for what they needed. And I was a loading dock clerk. I had no idea what the fuck that was when I got there. I thought, it's Canon. I'm like, okay, well, I could just work here for like a couple of months and then they'll have me like working with camera equipment. This is has nothing to do with camera equipment. I work for Canon. So Canon is split in two. There's the Canon that we know, like Canon, Sony. Uh, it's still one company, but you got Canon, Sony, uh, Nikon, Fujifilm, all the different brands that I, I know I'm missing some, but it's okay, they'll be all right. Um, <laughs> So when it came to this one, I was like, oh, I'm going to be working with cameras. Absolutely not, people. I was checking it. And not, not to say, because like I said, I'm not above working a job. Like, I love the job. Don't get me wrong. I loved it to death. Um, I mean, waking up early in the morning and getting on the train at 4 o'clock was brutal. But You didn't like it? Uh, <laughs> there were times where it was therapeutic. And then there were times where the crazies. 4 a.m. Shit, I remember waking up at 4 a.m. to go to the bakery. And I'm just like, ah. Oh. But it was the motivating, that was the motivation that I needed to say, okay, well, I'm only doing, this is only temporary. I kept telling myself that every day I wake up, okay, this is, this is a stepping stone to where I want to be. Yeah. So I could just keep this going for now, but this is not what I'm going to be doing for the next five to 10 years. That's definitely not it. When I got there, I check in trucks, people. That's literally all I do. I, I was at the, what, the, the one summit or the one Vanderbilt, I think it was the one Vanderbilt building which is like this big ass building. Um, the summit is at the top, for those of you who don't know, it's a, like attached to Grand Central. And so I'm checking in like just a whole bunch of like vendors. So um, anybody you can think of that sells food and stuff, uh, I was gonna say Pepperidge Farm, that's in the South. Um, you had the, the, the Baldor guy, I loved him to death, Mr. Ricky, he was awesome. Baldor, um, um, uh, 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 what is it? Fresh Direct. Uh, all these different like vendors and stuff. And so that's... So how is this Canon? So this is where it gets interesting. So Canon is... When I was working at Canon, is bigger than just cameras. And I didn't know that. So I worked for the Canon Business and Processing Center, which had nothing to do with cameras at all. Oh, shit. It you must like have been we so just, disappointed. <sighs> disappointment is an understatement. 
<laughs> I was so upset. But like I told y'all, I it's a job. You know what I mean? It paid me decently. And I didn't have a job at the time. So it was like, okay, well, I could do this. And then after work, in my mind, I was like, okay, I can do this. I work from six to three. So I have plenty of time to gain clientele, go to networking events and stuff like that. That's a great point that you mentioned. Sorry to interrupt you. But yes, mm-hmm. getting a job to that allows you still to do what you need to do, mm-hmm. especially um, for, let's say, musicians and photographers. Mm-hmm. We need the mornings and we need the evenings. Mm-hmm. Whatever the fuck you do in the middle of the day, That's if you a- can get a job <laughs> that gets you working in the middle of the day while you can still take shoots, mm-hmm. In the because you know nobody shoots in the middle of the day unless it's like a studio or something you know mm-hmm. like a, but most of like portraits and things like that it's either morning or evening, um, so if you can find something to do with your time and if your job allows you to do that, that's, that's a great that's thing you know. That's yeah, so maybe don't like don't work on weekends because that's mostly <laughs> when you know that's these things happen. Mm-hmm. Artist artistry and you know all the networking events and all these things. It's evenings and weekends. If you can get a job Monday through Friday in the middle fucking day, you're good. set. You're golden. You're good to go. And um, continue. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Where the fuck was I? I so the the job it wasn't it wasn't what I wanted to be, and I actually I was trying to use the job as a stepping stone as well. So I said, okay, well maybe I'll run into someone um, that you know they might need my expertise in photography and stuff like that. It did not work out that way at all. <laughs> but not to say it won't work out for any of you who attempt it, because it will work. It, I've had it happen. It just so happened that this one job, it just, you know, it didn't work out for me. Um, but it it kind of, I don't know how to explain it. Like, because I had to be there so early, of course, the evenings, I wanted that time to, you know, shoot and stuff like that. But I was working all day. Then I had to catch the train to get back to Brooklyn, which put me there at like four, sometimes five o'clock. And I'm like, man, I can go to an event, but this event, I can't really be out that late because I gotta be up early. Yeah. And so it was kind of messing me up. But I say that to say this. Sometimes within that, like when, like you said, like you have to find that downtime or find like if you if you can find a job in the in the middle of the day where you have some downtime, perfect. For me, most of the events, like we we do events and stuff like that from time to time. So. Most of the events are like in the evening. So I actually lucked up and there was this one event and I'm, I promise y'all I was not going to do it because it was a, a wonderful opportunity that one of my friends put me on to, but because it was so late and I know I had to be up the next day, it was brutal. Um, I think it started at like eight and it, ended, it was an indie film festival or like they were showing like an indie film. Um, I just was going there and this was free. This was just me trying to put myself out there, you know what I mean? Um, went to this indie film, I cannot think of, AJ Story, that was the name of it, it was a really good film too. Um, end up meeting the director of this film, which is Christina. I cannot think of Christina's last name, hopefully I can get that in there, because she's mm-hmm. awesome, she's like amazing. If it comes to like anybody wants to deal in film and stuff, she's the go-to, but she is amazing. So I went to this indie film uh, show showcase or showing or opening, and um, I end up meeting it was crazy. I ended up meeting like this guy. I don't know his name right now, but it was this guy that I used to watch on uh, Blacklist, this TV show, Blacklist. Um, I met Leon that played all the, uh, he was in Temptations, Five Heartbeats. Um, if you know, you know. If you, you, you know, you know Leon. I think it's Leon Thomas or something like that. The third, maybe Leon Thomas. No, that's not his name. Leon Thomas is a singer from uh, Victorious. Um, it's Leon something. Okay. But it's Leon he's a, something. Yeah, it's Leon <laughs> something. He he is a very good actor. A lot of us know him. We we do know who he is. Um, and I met him. I met one of my favorite battle rap artists, Loaded Lux. It was insane. Yes, I had to stay there till one o'clock in the morning. Yes, I was dead shit tired when I got to work the next day. But that opportunity, because I went ahead and said, you know what, fuck it. I'm gonna do this. I, I think this is really important, and it's something that was in. It was something in me that was like, "Yo, I think you really need to go." So because of me taking that best foot forward and going out and just saying, "You know what? Fuck it," and then in my mind, I'm like, "I'm young, so I, I'll, I'll sleep when I'm dead." So yes, yes, I agree with that so much. It's like fucking sleep later, you know. Like nobody, there is a saying that says like nobody, you know, 
comes to an end of a life and be like, I wish I slept more. Yeah, Who the fuck cares? Like, you need to crazy. sleep. It's important. You need it because, you know, it's you, you don't want to die. Yeah. So you need to sleep. But if once in a while there's an opportunity that requires you to stay mm-hmm. awake, fucking stay awake, do what you need to do, do need to meet do. some famous, cool-ass people, and then sleep later. You, you like, it's fine. You will not be disappointed either. You won't, you won't even... You'll be so surprised. You'll think you're tired and you're not even tired. Like, no, yeah, because it's worth it. You know, mm-hmm. it's not like you're not staying up because you're like, doing homework or something no mm-hmm. you're you're out there you're doing something that is important for the future you know and it's like yeah we can sleep later like i had i had times that i just i had days that i just crawled into bed mm-hmm. at the end of the night i was like oh my god but i'm so happy you know like you and that's, what you need to do. that's what it needs to be mm-hmm. and so that's what ended up happening so because of me taking that leap of faith with that one that one event um me and Christina are cool. Um, she does like a lot of, she, she's a pretty busy person, but I've done several productions with her. Uh, the guy that actually helped me or uh, I guess recommended me go to the event, I actually shoot for his podcast. He has like a mental health type of podcast for men. Now and you're doing like it's yeah, current. I'm doing, okay. I do it like, uh, it's like every month. So okay. I shoot and we have like a nice little studio at the uh, Gentleman's Factory in Brooklyn, downtown Brooklyn. And um, it's just, those opportunities came because all of this stemmed, I don't know where to look, all of this stemmed <laughs> from me just literally like that one event, just just showing that I'm dependable, showing that I'm sociable because I was talking to everybody and being like super nice. Plus, I'm from the South. I have my little Southern hospitality, so I'm yes, ma'am, yes, sir, everything. They were like, oh, I love this. I'm like, yeah, this, this is awesome. Thank you, Mom. And um, and yeah, because of that, it, it opened up a lot of opportunities, and it's still it, it's gradually doing that still from that 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 one little ball that was rolling it's getting bigger and bigger and because of that i just got to take those leap of faith sometimes it's the seeds that we're planting you know like mm-hmm. sometimes i like recently actually like i'd be getting phone calls from people that recommended me to some other people mm-hmm. from like six months ago that I did like this mm-hmm. little project that wasn't even like worth that much. But now I get this phone call because, oh, somebody recommended you. And and it's just like, to me, it's, you know, mm-hmm. it's like, ah, you can't even see that sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like you might think this is useless or what am I doing here? Or this is whatever, you know, it's so little money or it's not worth it. It's worth it. Yeah, Everything is fucking worth it. Worth it. It's but worth you it. need to change your mindset because if that's gonna be your mindset, Every time you're going somewhere and you're like, I need to gain something immediately. I need to get, nah. It's not going to, yeah. But just to change your mindset into knowing that whatever you're doing, whatever it is that you're doing, going to lead somewhere. Mm -hmm. Every step, no matter what. So these hours you're not sleeping or this shitty job that you think you need to get when you just first arrive here or this project that doesn't pay you much or all these things it's 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 you working it's you moving forward and when we're in the top there's gonna be a story to tell right mm-hmm. and we're gonna be like remember when at the this? top you can get all the sleep you <laughs> all the sleep you fucking want when you're at the top exactly right penthouse or whatever <laughs> it is you're at you know in your cabin in the woods for real but yeah when the money starts rolling you can rest then but i feel like new york it's not the city to come here to rest yeah. It's important because mm-hmm. you need to do all these subway stairs. You need to, you know, <laughs> you need to have your energy <laughs> to sleep and eat. But, you know, you didn't come here to sleep. I feel yeah. like that's like you just need to remember. And I see a lot of people here hustling and, yeah. you know, doing whatever they can and um, and just making it work. And which reminds me, <laughs> do you know those people? I, I'm curious about your opinion. You know, those people um, in Times Square that they'll be just waiting with their cameras and they will be taking. I hope you're not talking about the uh, the the Mari. What is it? Mar the characters, right? Not the characters. No, no, no I'm talking about like the photographers that oh, will be taking man. photos and then showing them to you and be like, "Oh, do you like it?" And you're tourists, right? Yeah. Like you're excited. And you're like, "Oh my god, that's an amazing photo." <laughs> do you know how much they fucking charge for one photo? Have you ever like asked? So I had to happen to me for my birthday. <laughs> I went down there. So um, at the time, uh, this is. Yeah, at the time I was down there with uh, me, my friends, my ex, 
And um, there was a guy, it was a photographer guy. He came up. He was like, man, you, you look real nice tonight, man. Let me get a picture of you. And I think. And you're like, oh, my God, thank you. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm, in my head, I'm like, I live here, bro. Like, I don't need you to take a picture of me. Like, I really, And I'm not used to getting pictures taken of me anyway. I'm, I'm usually behind the camera, not in front of it. So um, the fact that he did it, everybody was, like, hyping me. I'm like, yeah, do it. It's your birthday. Do it. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'll do it. Took the pictures. And I was like, okay, well, I did it. I, I didn't want the pictures at all. I was just like, I did it. I, I did it. And so he's showing me the picture. I was like. All right, damn, that's kind of nice, brother. Like, <laughs> man, that's, that's not bad. Now, I did not, I did not get the pictures. Which, reflecting on it, I should have, because I wanted to support. Um, I wanted to support him, because I wanted to support him, his brand, and his hustle, because that's a different type of hustle going on there. And it was like, it was like two or three o'clock in the morning, like where other people would be asleep. He's up and getting money, you know what I mean? So, and doing what he loves doing, he wanted to do photography. And so we started talking a little bit. Uh, we had like a brief discussion while my friends would, I didn't want to be rude. But um, he said he's in the photography and stuff. So we end up following each other on Instagram. And this happens so much to me. We followed each other. He looks at the page. He's like, oh shit, you're a real photographer. Like, you're yeah, really? a real one. And I'm like, what's the dip? Like, bro, you're doing the same thing I'm doing. You just don't have the, the you haven't set your page up yet to look like this. Like, like, like we talked about the niche, when you have that certain lane or that certain, that certain aspect of photography that you excel at, he's really good. I, I mean, I don't know him personally, but from what I learned from him, from that, that interaction that we had, he's like, he's really good at doing that, that tourist type, like going in the city, all the lights and everything. He's, he's good at creating bokeh. Like, I was like, bro, you have the skill set. You just got to push it. You know what I mean? Um, and he was just doing it just to hustle. That's it. He didn't know how to edit. He didn't know how to do anything. He literally was just pointing and clicking, and that was how he got his money. Would you do it? Would I do what? Go out at 3 o'clock in the morning and do it? Hell Not no. 3 o'clock in the morning, no, but, like, but like, uh, you know, taking, taking photos of, of tourists and selling them the photos for 20 bucks. I would absolutely do that. Um, I've actually been trying to figure out how to make it a seamless process because it's one thing to take a picture, but I really like editing sometimes. Like, I need my lighting to be perfect. Mm -hmm. And um, I told myself that I would start doing that on Brooklyn Bridge, but I just haven't figured out how to, like, unless I have my laptop with me and I take the picture out. And then, you know, people are impatient too. Like when they're doing stuff and walking on the bridge, they got, pla they got places to be. So I was like, damn, how can I actually capitalize on this, but make it the Asani Essentials experience that I want it to be. Like I can't, I can't just, I'm not a person that can just, when you walk up, click, all right, get out of here. Like I can't do that. Like I need to. I need you to see the picture sometimes. I need you to. I need you to feel how I feel about the picture. Like, ooh, this is a, ooh, you did your thing. Like, look at this. And I need you to feel that same thing. So in order for me to feel like completed and not give you shit, I need the best. The I need to give you the best of the best. So I might have to bring my laptop out there. Um, I've like looked into uh, the guy that I work for now. Um, he looked into like the software that they have where you can it's, it's kind of like tethering like wire and tethering so mm -hmm. you could take the picture and it instantly goes straight for in jpeg form though it does like a an abbreviated like edit like okay. a quick edit of the skin and stuff like that and then it just sends it straight to your phone and i'm like oh shit that's perfect didn't go through with it 100 percent um because it, it it had like it had its little flaws and bugs and stuff like that that they did not you know fix in time but something like that would would work really well for you know for what I'm trying to do as far as that. So I think that one of these days I will be out there doing that on Brooklyn Bridge or okay. maybe in Times Square. I don't know. I feel like know. Brooklyn Bridge is a good thing because I feel like in Times Square they already have all these people. They, have they don't have they don't have it in Brooklyn Bridge. I don't Bridge. know anybody I know they have the um I haven't seen anyone on the bridge and I've gone I I'm Dumbo is my area. Um even though I live in Manhattan. Um I only seen the 360 booths, and that's it. It's one at the beginning, right? Yeah, and it's one at I've the seen end. it a well, few times. Middle, one at the end. But I've as far as like times. photography or videos or anything, nothing. Yeah. No. So it's always like people with their phones and stuff. But Brooklyn Bridge needs to be very specific because first of all, now it's gonna be summertime, so it's sunny as fuck there. Mm -hmm. It's hot. It, the, the sun is like you know you have all the shadows and you have all the people. Mm -hmm. You know, so like when I take my clients to Brooklyn Bridge, we do it 7 a.m. Yeah, 7 a.m. you come there, the bridge control. is freaking empty, mm -hmm. right? But if you go there a little bit like after that, that's forget about it. Yeah. The bridge is packed. Yeah. Packed. And I hate it. Like me personally, I don't like photos that you know you can 
see all the people with all yeah. the different colors and I'm like I'm not gonna work three hours in Photoshop just to edit all yeah. these 11 people out of the photo I'm just like nah it definitely does it's 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 stressful when yeah. it comes to that because I've had a few clients that have wanted pictures on Brooklyn Bridge and they pick the worst times in the world I'm like damn like do you know what you're doing to yourself Mm. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm immediately, like, I'm telling them, I'm like, nah, that's not the that's time. You're going to, either you're waking up early or maybe sunset, but that's going to be, like, a whole different story with people. Yeah. But, yeah, but because Times Square, you can kind of, like, go around it because it is Times Square. Yeah. You can have the people in the background. Yeah. But Brooklyn Bridge is very specific, and because you're trying, I feel like you're trying to catch the bridge itself, mm -hmm. it's very specific if you have a lot of distractions from people that can, yeah, but that's, like, that's a different topic. What you actually... <laughs> What you actually um, reminded me is that you said that you want people to get the whole experience, mm -hmm. right? And something that I wanted to recommend people before we finish, because we have 20 minutes left. That's crazy. Um, well, 10 minutes is music, so we actually have 10 minutes left, and then five minutes out of it, I'm going to read you the national holidays. We like, did. As always, yeah. <laughs> so we actually have five minutes left. But before we finish, <laughs> something that I do have... I have a like, little recommendation. I didn't do it myself, uh, but I thought about it. Uh, if you are creative starting out and you want to get your business out there, um, it depends on the type of surface services that you provide, but mm -hmm. let's say photography, it works really well with photography. There is a thing, there are two things. First thing called, um, I don't know if you heard about it, Airbnb experience. Yeah. Oh, no, you got me turning around in my seat now. Yeah, what? nobody nobody heard about I it, and it's, it's pretty this. crazy. Like, um, um, Airbnb experience is it's not about renting a place. It's about renting an experience, like bu buying an experience. So basically, for photographers, you will provide your services, okay. but you can't just say it's a photo shoot one hour. It has oh, no, to this be has to be like the whole, like the weekend or like, like not, not the weekend. Like it can be an hour, but it okay. has to be an experience. So you got to be like, we're going to walk, walk through Central Park. Okay. Gotcha. We're going to, you know, jump the rope. And while you're jumping, I'm going to take photos and, yeah. you know, I'm going to tell you the history of Central Park. Or It has to be an experience. It can be just like a regular service. I actually really like that. It's I, pretty cool. I wanted to do something like that. So that's how it's pretty cool. So you can check it out. Airbnb experiences. Airbnb experience. Um, okay. Because again, it's an experience. So like a lot of photographers use tour, like being like tour a tour guide, mm -hmm. while you also take photos, you know, of of the, the th so it can work pretty well if you know and you know the city. Yeah. So for you that can work. I don't know, and, and it's your prices. I'm gonna have to check that. I have a friend who just well he does it for the board of education. He just got he just landed a job. Um, he's a, a teacher or a photographer. Something I don't know. I don't. I, I don't want to mess anything up with titles. But um, he just said that same thing. And before my cousin, my cousin, he actually moved to Jersey not too long ago. But he was trying to do the same thing because he used to work at public hotel and he was there for a while. And he was like, "Yo, we have a lot of like hotel guests that will come, and they want to." Uh, Sorry, <laughs> we have a lot of hotel guests. Yeah, that maybe come. maybe don't yell next time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, are you live? That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Just like shut up. live radio. What's up? Okay. Um, well, Sorry. He had a lot of uh, people that guests that would come to the hotel, and of course they were you know this hotel is an expensive hotel. It's like a nightclub. It has a rooftop club and bar, and then they have like a basement rooftop. I mean rooftop. A basement <laughs> bar and club too. <laughs> It is intense in there, man. But um, I think it's like maybe four hundred. I don't know how much the it is. The public like. hotel. I think I passed it's it nice. yesterday. I love it. It's Midtown. Yes. I think I, I passed it. it yesterday, and I, we, me and, uh, and Rafa, my roommate, we wanted to go to a rooftop, but yes, it was a public hotel, but we couldn't get it. It is. It is. <laughs> it, see what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it is so nice. Once you, I only got in because he worked there. Shoot, I used to walk up to him. He was like, "Oh, I'm, a, I'm like, all right, cool. I'm I don't know what's going. I will pay bitch. if I need to, but." But um, he was like, it's a lot of clients that come there, and it's their first time in New York. They're traveling from wherever, and they would like for, you know, photos. So he was like, let's, let's try to think of, like, a package to create. So, like, when they come, you know, I get, like, this little bit of money, and then you get majority of it. But then we follow them around, or we might just do, like, a photo shoot in the public hotel type of thing, and, like, in the area. It's like, okay, that sounds nice. So the Airbnb experience sounds similar to that. I, 
I think I would more so go towards the Airbnb experience. Um, until we get the schematics for whatever we were trying to, or whatever he suggested that we try to create. But that's definitely, and that's my type of thing. Because it's feel, all about yeah. the vibe. And I mean? feel like it's a good place to start if you want to spread the word, especially because Airbnb is, is for tourists usually. Mm-hmm. And people coming out of town, out of the country, you know, and like in New York, first time, second time, third time, doesn't matter. Uh, but it's a good thing to just have you in there, mm-hmm. you know. And next time they will hire you privately or mm-hmm. whatever, you know. Um, so there's the Airbnb experience, and for uh, other types of businesses, there's I, I know it's not like the best option because they take a lot of percentage out of you, but Groupon, 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 yeah, you can, you, you can, can yeah, you can do photography on Groupon, yes, yeah, so you can offer packages and things like that, and not you because you're a pro, but I'm talking about people who are coming new to the city and because they take so much, they take like forty oh, okay. percent. Okay. No, it's not like it's not something that I would offer as like a solid business structure you know to have it's something to get your feet wet. it's exactly it's something if you want to gain experience and as um, i like to say that like just do everything just do everything to start out so whatever you are like if you're your a wedding band or if you're a photographer whatever it is that you do maybe not acting because i don't know how if you're an actor just go on the backstage um, website but um just uh check out groupon and you can uh, offer your services there especially during the holiday season people are like families you know and they're looking for photo shoots yeah. and all that it's cheap well, usually it's Santa. not like it's not really you know like something crazy but it's something again like noble said like it's something to get you started something that you know can get you, get you like a little boost or to build mm-hmm. your portfolio if you're looking to build your portfolio just go to facebook and mm-hmm. uh, also helps there are a lot of jobs there going to the, the, all these creative groups and you know there, there's so much but you gotta work yeah. you gotta put in the work you'll find everything like i i work in like five different companies now but it's just like because you gotta do what you gotta do yeah. and you know until the word uh, spreads and the phone starts ringing just just you know do what you gotta do nothing to it, right to oh my god okay so um anything that you would like to add before we finish because we have the national holidays now and then some music um i want to no. thank my mom yeah <laughs> We, we'll take it, but no, I'm just playing. Uh, nah, um, I want to thank you for having me on the show, first and foremost. Thank you for um, coming. I, I thank you for having me again, because, <laughs> you know, could have been anywhere in the world, but we're right here. Um, but uh, I appreciate the opportunity to come on here. Um, I want to thank, I don't know, just people. <laughs> the only thing I want to put out there is love. Love thy neighbor. You know why? Because we need more than what's been given out there. That's true. Oh, beautiful words. Should yeah. make a quote. I, I'll, try. I'll put it on a t-shirt. I'll put it on a t-shirt. And then on the back of that shit, it's going to say, The Struggle. <laughs> New York life. <laughs> For real. Okay. So, um, before we finish, we got some national holidays to go over. Which one is the first that I told you, like, on the break? Announce um, it. Announce it. The first one you told me it is uh 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 no that's not it it's not pink look no. at me oh yeah it is I was, oh I should have went with my first gut damn I had it it's Nash not National Pink Day yeah yeah oh that's it yeah. okay that's it's crazy. a national y'all I'm out here Pink Day oh no sorry it's International Pink international. Day international so yes so as you can see my dear YouTubers I'm always <laughs> always. <laughs> celebrating International Pink Day. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the first one we're going to start with, and then we have some more. You're going to like those. So we have April 10th, Encourage a Young Writer Day. Mm. Encourage a Young Writer. I like that. I like that. Yeah, so, you know, if you have young kids, if you teach a school, if you have some mentees that you're, you know, encourage them to write to keep a journal Mm -hmm. to keep their thoughts i feel like we all need that you Mm -hmm. know not only kids we all need to do that i i write a lot lately but i'm still not doing it every day so you know i've gotten better with it i didn't start writing until i put myself in therapy well not put myself in well yeah technically i seek i I wanted to try therapy out and that was like one of our exercises i'm like write I i like this Expressive, get your thoughts out on paper so you actually know how you feel. Exactly. Next in line is Global Work From Home Day. 
Hey, that's me all day. <laughs> <laughs> That is funny. Yeah, I do work from home from time to time, but yeah. I mean, yeah, all our editing is happening at home, right? Um, so, yeah, that's a good day. I feel like after COVID, we all know what it's mm-hmm. like to work from home. Um, ooh, that's my favorite. National Hug Your Dog Day. So. <laughs> I don't have a dog anymore, but, you know, I hug. You know what's crazy? I hugged a dog this much. Two days in a row. Yesterday, Just I went like to the Just like randomly gym. on the subway? Yes. or <laughs> I hugged a dog this morning. His name was Chico. That was uh, on the F train this morning. He was, the, yeah, he was pretty cool. And then yesterday, I hugged another dog. What was her name? Midnight? Wasn't it? Okay, I might be butchering That's a very creative name. Yeah. Midnight. She was, it was a black Labrador. Um, well, there you go. Then you're like, you're doing it. Okay, okay. I'm going to get home and I'm going to hug Chooch. Yeah. And he's going to be like, but, you know, um, we also, if you want to hug some more, it's also National Farm Animal Day. So okay. <laughs> if you're feeling like <laughs> I'll drive out, the I probably you out probably out won't see a cow on the subway. But if you feel like celebrating the day, just go upstate. Mess around. <laughs> you want to go take the graffiti pictures? The, the yeah, there buildings. you go. You can find go a there. cow there, like, like something, right? <laughs> um, what else? Oh, and two more. So one is National Siblings Day. Mm. If you want to hug some more, you guys, there's a lot of hugging involved in April 10th. Um, because if you have siblings, just know this is your day. I don't have siblings. I'm an only child. So unfortunately for me. My siblings, if you know, you know. <laughs> I love you guys, all my brothers and sisters. Because it's a few of us, so. I want to thank my mom. Yeah. Thank <laughs> my, my mom for being awesome. My dad for never, you know what? I'm not going to say that's not appropriate. I say never pulling out, but we're not going to. Thank you, dad. I love you. He's awesome, though. He, my dad's awesome. It's like, I got you, boy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you like, why would you say that? Right? I'm like that. You know me. I'm just like, thank you for not it pulling out. It's not a secret. I mean, you know. Um... <laughs> Anyway, and the last day is Salvation Army Founders Day. I thought you was about to say Sylvester Stallone Day. No. Say it one more time. That was Salvation Army Founders Day. Salvation Army Founders Day. Do you know what Salvation Army is? Absolutely. Yeah, so Salvation Army, they're doing a great job. And I remember when I was moving from L.A. when COVID happened, I needed to, like, empty my entire apartment and go back to Israel. And, um, well, I couldn't take all of it with me. So I literally had, like, I think I donated 10 boxes. Okay. 10 boxes like it's yeah and i so i called them or i emailed them and they came and picked everything up they just came with a truck took all the boxes and it was like kitchen stuff and bedroom stuff and living room just a lot of things so um you know it's a great thing especially like if you if you have stuff and we all have junk at home like we all have so many things that we just like (laughs) we buy more and more and more we never throw throw it out but it's nice to sometimes have this day to just like clear your house Mm -hmm. from all the junk and all the things that that you don't need exactly and like again maybe you're not using it but some people may benefit out Mm -hmm. of it or if you bought something new instead of just taking it out on the street for the trash to pick it up later i mean of course you can sell it and that's your business of course obviously i'm selling my old stuff because live in new york need the money (laughs) but some things you can just donate you know some things you want you're not gonna sell like you know some um, you know, things that, whatever, it's your decision what you want to sell or donate. <laughs> but this is a great cause. It's a great thing. If you don't want to do it like that, there is also, what's the store that you donate oh, uh, to? Goodwill? Uh, Goodwill. Mm-hmm. There you go. You can donate to How Goodwill. How do I know that? Because I be in Goodwill. <laughs> go be honest. Good, listen, right. the quality? <laughs> Not this Damn shit. Damn it. Yet. Upper East, Goodwill? Yeah. yeah you the, know, uh, Beverly Hills in LA, Goodwill? Yeah. I know, that's probably really nice. Oh, my God. <laughs> we used to go to the one on the island in Savannah, and it was, that's where you get all the best shit. But yeah, no, you can, there, there are some, you know, you can find some good stuff there. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, New York is really known for, like, vintage, you know, mm-hmm. and all these secondhand stores, and they're, like, really good things here. I'm a here. thrifter. I'm a thrift yeah. shopper to the death. No, it's I'm good. Sure. Like, sometimes, like, I, I found some really good things there that, like, still had the tag on, you know, mm-hmm. like, so it's basically practically new, so that's amazing. I have clothes in my closet. That's I mean, yeah, maybe don't buy underwear there, you know, but, like, things I'm, that, you know. Yeah, you don't can. do that. <laughs> 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 yeah, <that's- laughs> maybe not. But, you know, some things you can definitely buy there. I buy a lot of, like, especially coats, you know, and, like, jackets and things that, you know, I buy. So that's, that's good. But anyway, that's off the topic. Next time we'll, we'll talk about, you know, how you get by in New York City because it's mm-hmm. freaking expensive. Maybe don't buy Gucci. Mm-hmm. Um, unless you can and 
kudos. And if you can, holler at me. <laughs> you need a photographer? I'm your person. I know, just like buy some and, and call me. And she's your person too. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so these are the national days. So donate and hug and love and uh, encourage and, you know, a lot of, all of I love these national holidays because every every radio show, like every episode, I get to talk about like different stuff, and That's I true. I just I, I Google it, and like every day there's so many things that can be celebrated, which is amazing. And I'm I, I took out some, like there are a lot more. I was just like, okay, we just have like five more minutes left, so you know. Um, so yeah, so I hope you learned something today, and I hope it helped you because whether you are a photographer, singer, or you know whatever creative field that you're any type of freelancing i hope that these tips 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 <laughs> these tips helped you today and if you have any more questions you know uh for those of you who are watching on youtube i'm gonna attach noble social media and website below so you can communicate with him you can ask him questions is that okay yeah, absolutely. okay that's fine um and you know how to find me so yeah any more questions that you have feel free to reach out and now i'm gonna put on some music because i have six minutes to get the hell out of the studio so <laughs> some more of uh, the playlists and thank you novo uh, bye the pleasure was mine.